Oh, there it is. It's a rooster right there. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Oh, gosh. He was ripping it up. Wow. Whoo. All right, guys. Louise has got a rooster biting on the other side, but it's not a, it hasn't quite taken it down yet. You got it? Yeah, doubled up. Good job, Louisa. Good job. The clouds were moving more and more in on us, but so were the rooster fish. Fish on! <laughs> I think it's another big rooster. Man, that's about the fifth or sixth one today. And this one feels like it's a pretty good size one too. This is no baby. No baby at all. Charlie, we're gonna need that other line out of the way. Oh my gosh. It has been a pretty action-packed morning here. Oh, there it is. It's a rooster right there. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Oh, gosh. He was ripping it up. Wow. Whoo. All right, guys. Louise has got a rooster biting on the other side, but it's not a, it hasn't quite taken it down yet. You got it? Yeah, doubled up. Good job, Louisa. Good job. Keep it tight. Well done. Oh, my gosh. This is a pretty strong fish here, too. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Look at it right there. Wow. It appeared that we were in a pretty good school of rooster fish. I don't know how well he's hooked. Looks good, but it's hard to tell sometimes. Come here, one more little circle. There we go. Neutral, neutral. Got him. Mm. He went crazy, but we got him. Wow. Yeah, and that hook was in there pretty good. It was hard to tell. That's the Costa Rican special right there, guys, the rooster fish. That's the king of the inshore right there. If you're coming to Costa Rica and you want to do some inshore fishing, this is what you should go after. And right behind it, the big Kubera snapper that they have to offer out here. The rooster fishing was just about as hot as it could be. Saying goodbye to another one. Oh my gosh, he took right off. <laughs> another one of those fish that just jetted off. Didn't even get to shake them. These fish are strong out here, man. Tough fish in Costa Rica. We got that rooster fish back in the water, and sure enough, we were hooked up again. Got him. There he is, another fish on. Guys, this is ridiculous. I just let that fish go. We didn't even get all the lines out. We already have another one hooked up. This is definitely the best rooster fish bite I have ever seen out here in Costa Rica. The whole week has been one rooster after another, it seems like. That was an amazing rooster fish bite that we were in. I mean, it was just an epic day inshore fishing. He's about to come up. There it is, another rooster. Sure is. Whoa, he's switching on me. In this line here. Got a couple lines out. We just got that one on the downrigger. They're kind of clipped in, really, not the downrigger. Look at this here. Oh, yeah. These are strong fish. I'm gonna let him wear himself down a little bit. And like I said earlier, these fish are in the jack family, so they're really strong. They don't wear down real easy, but once you get them out of the water, you do need to get them back in pretty quick, because they are a little fragile, even though they're tough when they're fighting. There we go, gosh. Oh yeah, look at them, cut across the surface. We just got in the clean water. We're kind of trolling a little color change right here. There's some debris and things in the water. He's coming up again. There he is. Oh, he kind of popped his head out. All right, Charlie, take this. Got the circle hook, got him in the belly again. So I'm going to want to get it out kind of quick here, give me some slack. Up. Yeah, the circle hook's got him in the belly again. So uh, I'm gonna take it easy on him and get him unhooked and back in the water as fast as possible. Like I said, that's the biggest problem with circles. When they get in the belly, it's real hard to get him out. But this one pulled his belly all the way out of his, out of his belly, out of his mouth. He's putting a heck of a bend in that rod. This is a pretty hefty duty rod. And it's that, I mean, that rooster fish right there is not more than maybe 12, 15 pounds. All right, Charlie. 
think we got him now. Watch out. Got it. Oh, look at that. It slipped out of his belly. Put him over here where I can see a little better. Look at that. It actually popped out of his belly on his own with all the shaking he did. Okay, so we got the hook out of him. It did have a piece of his belly wrapped in there. But we got it out pretty quick, so it looks like he's gonna be okay. Yeah, look at that, he's taking off. No problem at all, he fought his way out of my hands. That was great. Awesome day out here. For today's adventure at Crocodile Bay Resort, we decided to go on the horseback riding tour. After leaving Crocodile Bay Resort, we drove down the road to a little farm right by the beach where they had the horses that we were going to go on our horseback tour with. It was actually a little more than just the horseback riding tour because we went down the beach, we went through the woods, we went up a mountain, we went to the waterfall, we did a little bit of everything. So there was a lot that happened on this trip. So we got saddled up and started taking the horses down a little trail that led towards the beach. That trail was beautiful. There were all kinds of neat trees and flowers and all kinds of stuff on that. And it was only like a five minute trail down to the beach. I mean, I knew right away that it was going to be a good tour just from the way that it started. Passion fruit flower. It's pretty neat. Never seen one of those before. We'd have been here a little later in the season, we'd have actually got to see the fruit. Everything in Costa Rica is beautiful, but when you're seeing it from the back of a horse, it just changes the whole perspective of it. This is good. Look at this. Oh, this yeah. is awesome. So pretty. So we got down to the beach and uh, it was low tide. It's a little bit prettier when you're riding the horses down the beach and the tide's right there by the horses and it's high tide and everything. But with the low tide, it was really cool because there was about 300 yards of water that was gone. So you just get all this extra beach area and you get to see what's below the surface a little bit. So after going about, I don't know, maybe a mile down the beach, we cut off to our right where there was a little trail heading up into the woods. The trail had all kinds of pretty flowers on it and foliage, and it was just a beautiful horse ride. I mean, very comfortable, the perfect temperature out. And then we took the horses through another field, and then we started going into some thicker stuff into the jungle. And after we got on that next trail that was a little deeper in the jungle, we started hearing some monkeys around us, and then all of a sudden they started jumping over our heads right above us while we were on the horses. Monkeys are going crazy around here. <laughs> this is so beautiful. like spider monkeys up there. Surrounded by monkeys, three different species. This is a really cool eco tour. I think it's been my favorite one that I've been on so far. Um, I really like the jungle tour, but being out here on the horses in the jungle and riding them down the beach, we haven't even got to the waterfall yet, and it's really amazing, so. At the end of that thicker trail, came out to another opening, and there was like a little platform there, and we kind of got off our horses and took a little break and we could look down at the field below us that we just crossed with our horses and even the ocean that was out there that we had just passed. So we could actually see how far we'd come in that short amount of time. After taking a little breather there and getting some water, we got back on our horses and started making our way up the trail again. And the trail started getting a lot tougher to go down. I mean, we were on this little skinny, muddy trail, and you could see the horses' feet slipping as they're stepping on it, and they're heavy animals, you know? I mean, they're just slipping on it, and it's just this narrow trail, but they're used to it, you know? They go down it all the time. They're pretty sure-footed, like my buddy Jameson said. And uh, we started making our way up that trail. The horses did just fine. It got very steep in a couple spots, and I got to admit, you know, I was a little bit nervous, but this tour isn't for everybody. From this point on, this is the extended part of the tour that they did just for us, that they do for special clients. You know, if you feel like you are in shape and you're able to do something that does require a little more strenuous activity, 
the second part is going to be a little deeper in the jungle, more straight up and down with the horses, and you even come to a spot where you can't even ride the horses anymore. And so now we're walking up the side of this mountain and it's just gorgeous, just like everything else today has been. And we're seeing all this beautiful green foliage and trees and we're right here in the main area of the forest, gigantic trees around us. And we're this little trail that's just kind of cut out by some of the locals there. The bamboo rail, how it's cool is that? Very slippery right here. Yeah, it's super slippery here. We're walking on pretty much mud and this is just the bamboo rail that they put up so that you can walk down and see this waterfall. This is on private land, so it's not a public waterfall that you can go to. I just think it's really cool walking down trails like that and going for adventures because you never know what you're gonna see. You could run into monkeys or toucans or macaws, snakes, lizards, you never know what you'll see out there. There's just so much wildlife and so many pretty trees and flowers and things that you just don't get to see when you're at home in Florida. We're getting to the bottom and it started getting a little more sketchy. It was more straight up and down. There was even one point where we started getting a little nervous, like, should we keep on going or not? This is getting pretty wet and slippery. But it ended up not being that bad and we just kept pushing on and moving forward and we got down to the bottom where the waterfall was. And when I turned that corner and looked to my left and saw the waterfall for the first time, I was like, man, this was all worth it. Oh my God. The long horseback ride, the hiking up the mountain, everything. You forget about all of it when you're standing right there in the middle of the rainforest at the base of a waterfall. This place is so much more natural than the other uh, waterfall that we were at because again, like I said, this is on private land and uh, it's just, everything's like untouched. They do have their own little set of stairs that comes down here, but it's just for people they invite out here on the property. And it's beautiful. It's a really nice waterfall. Pretty untouched. Very cool. It's very humid too. It feels like it's 200 degrees. There's so much water in the air. But I like it. We were all just having a good time there. I mean, even one of our camera guys went and jumped in the waterfall. I mean, he looked like he just won a UFC fight or something, had his hands up in the air. It was awesome, dude. I mean, just a great experience. Got to experience it with some good friends, and it doesn't get any better than that. We ended up having to make our way back the exact same way we came. So the adventure on the way back was just as exciting as the adventure on the way there. So after we made our way back through the woods to our horses, we got on our horses and started making our way back down the mountain. All right, so we made it out of the jungle. Um, went into the jungle on the horses, which was pretty neat. Tied them up. We took them about as far as we can up a hill, uh, actually the side of a mountain, and uh, went down the waterfall. You definitely have to be in shape to do that. It is a little challenging. There's some pretty steep and slippery spots there. But it was a lot of fun. It was worth it at the end. And then uh, after we hiked all the way down there, we had to hike back up. So uh, that was the hard part, because there was a little more work involved. Now the horse wants to eat. He sees all this green stuff here. And there's McCall's right here. And there's McCall's right here in the tree beside us. Look at this. The horse doesn't even want to go anymore. He's calling the shots now. We ended up running into some macaws that were flying back and forth from a couple trees. And what they were doing when they were flying back and forth from these trees is they were grabbing fruit off one of the palm trees and flying it back to one of the other trees and they were eating it. I think it's so neat to be able to see parrots like that in the wild. It's so much cooler than seeing them when they're caged up. 